This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. <laughs> your mind is like your body. Train it right and it'll become stronger, faster, and more agile. Grounded in simple yet proven strategies, Thoughtfully Fit trains your mind to perform well under any challenging circumstance. It helps you identify your strengths and weaknesses, maximize your full potential, and customize a plan for success. Developed by Darcy Loma, one of America's most highly credentialed leadership coaches, Thoughtfully Fit is the culmination of her lifetime work training leaders and teams to achieve peak mental fitness and overcome any hurdle effectively. Valeria Tellez interviews Darcy Loma, the author of Thoughtfully Fit, your training plan for life and business success. Darcy Loma, creator of Thoughtfully Fit, is the founder and CEO of Darcy Loma Coaching and Consulting, a firm that specializes in solving organizations' people problems. She's a sought-after coach and consultant who has worked in 48 industries, with more than 500 different client organizations impacting tens of thousands of leaders and employees. She is one of America's most highly credentialed coaches, earning the prestigious Master's Certified Coach from the International Coach Federation, a distinction held by only 3.8% of coaches in the world. The University of Wisconsin-Madison, a Big Ten university, sought out Darcy to design its rigorous nine-month Certified Professional Coach training program. She served as the program's director, lead instructor, and then Director of Training and Quality Assurance since its inception. Before Darcy began her film in 2013, she served as the Director of U.S. Senator Herb Cole's office for 12 years, did national advance work for the White House, worked for two U.S. presidential campaigns, and served as a trusted senior advisor and deputy transition director to a governor. She received the Distinguished Certified Speaking Professional CSP Award from the National Speakers Association, the largest speakers association in the world. She has spoken at more than 500 events in front of audiences ranging from 25 to 2,500 every month. She has a Master of Science in Organization Development from Pepperdine University, Graziadio Business School, as an undergraduate, she double majored in German and mathematics, but the only time she uses these skills is when trying to double a recipe for German Black Forest cake. For the last 23 years, she has been an avid triathlete and Ironman. She uses her grit and determination in both her athletic and professional endeavors, along with her favorite job being a mom of two energetic teenage daughters, she enjoys adventure travel, yin yoga, kickboxing, spicy chai lattes, and afternoon naps. Meet Darcy at DarcyLoma.com. Here is the interview with Darcy Loma. In your own words, who is Darcy Loma? 
Well, first and foremost, I am a mom. I have two teenage daughters and I am a business owner. I own Darcy Loma Coaching Consulting and I am an athlete. I absolutely love to work hard to be fit and have been doing triathlons for 23 seasons now. That sounds wonderful. I have the idea of taking care of the body, but also the mind, right, Darcy? I have seen this in your program, in your training, your book. Well, it is. And that's where that's what really was the inspiration for the the model that I've created uh, Thoughtfully Fit is that if you want to be physically fit, you need to train and practice in the same way if you want to train, you know, handle yourself thoughtfully in every situation and, and deal with those uncomfortable moments and change and uncertainty. And when you're blindsided, you also can train and practice so that you can handle yourself thoughtfully, no matter what comes your way. How did you come across the inspiration for this, Darcy, from experience or you were influenced by mentors of other people? Yes, probably both. I, I would say Mostly, though, I started to notice I've been coaching for 15, 17 years, and I started to notice that my clients would come in and they had similar challenges and obstacles that got in the way of being successful. And so we spent about five years doing a deep dive research and categorizing all of the issues and the problems that people would bring into their coaching sessions and found that everything falls under six main categories, six hurdles that get in the way of being high performing and finding success. And so, and all, all of them, can, you can train and practice to be able to overcome and clear those hurdles so that you can get back to doing what you do best. I think I have them here, do I? Since you mentioned those. Oh no, I have the themes that became the basis for the Thoughtfully Fit model. Uh, mm -hmm. Stillness, strength, endurance, flexibility, balance, and agility. That's right. And they're all metaphors for being physically fit, right? Playing on that um, that metaphor. And so the, you know, stillness, the, the obstacle that we found is people came into coaching saying, oh, there's so much to do. I can't even think. <laughs> right. And that <laughs> lack of stillness, right? They w then were overwhelmed and overworked and not as creative or strategic. So that's one of them. That is right. Would you like to go through all of them, Darcy? Or oh, this is not the, we can yeah, wait yeah, for later, but I would love to hear more about them. Yeah, so strength is the second one. And, and this is about people would come into coaching saying, oh, I don't always handle myself the way I'd like. And so strength is being able to consciously choose how you show up. No matter how you're feeling, right? You, you, you are stuck in traffic and you show up to the meeting instead of just being on autopilot and saying, oh, I'm so frustrated, right? You take that moment to pause and to think, how do I want to show up when I walk through the door? And then have the strength to consciously choose, right, how you show up in that moment. Third hurdle, uh, people would come in and say, I feel stuck, stuck in a job that's not fulfilling or stuck, stuck in a, with a project, they can't figure out how to move forward. This aligns with the thoughtfully fit practice of endurance. And that's about being able to overcome those obstacles to be able to embrace a growth mindset so that you can get unstuck and move forward. Those are the three that are internal, where we get in our own way. And then there are three um, of these hurdles that are external, where we have challenges with other people. Do you want me to share those as well? Yes, that would be wonderful, Darcy. Yes, please. So uh, the first one is, I'd be fine if only you were different. <laughs> so, right, people would come in saying like, okay, how can I get my boss to smile when I walk through the door or when I come in the Zoom room? Or how can I get my kids to put the dishes in the dishwasher? If somebody else would be different, then I could be happy. And that aligns with the practice and thoughtfully fit of flexibility, which is really about being able to stretch to accept others just as they are, instead of putting all this energy and, and time into trying to change them to be the way we think they should be. Oh, I love that. That's a yeah. beautiful one. <laughs> and then um, the fifth hurdle is I have relationships that don't work. 
uh, whether it's personal or professional. And uh, this is the practice of balance. The relationships are out of balance. And so you might be over-functioning. You might be in this place of always acquiescing and saying, oh, it, I won't say anything. It's not a big deal. And it's a, a lose-win. So balance is all about being able to balance what do you want and need with what I want and need so that we can achieve alignment in that relationship. And then the last hurdle is um, some version of not, clients will come in and say, oh, Darcy, I was blindsided and I did not handle it well. And so, you know, you're in a meeting and somebody calls you out in front of everybody. And um, instead of pausing in that moment to think and take a breath and respond thoughtfully, you know, you snap back and and you go on autopilot and you have this knee jerk response and you get defensive and really you just make things worse. Those practices, they sound very spiritual to me. I have a lot of conversations here on spirituality. Do you have any spiritual beliefs or ideas about yourself in life, Darcy? Mm, well, yes. I mean, I've got a strong spirituality and, I, you know, I think that is really what drives everything and being mm-hmm. able to be connected to that spiritual sense. And in my mind, my vision is to create a a, a world where people are able to connect with their own spirituality and be able to find not only that inner harmony and peace, but so they can accept others because there's so much obviously wars and black lives matter and and just so much anger and hurt in the world it seems to me like it's a practice although i would love for that to be like an, an understanding in time but it seems like it's a practice we need to keep practicing these things and that's why coaches and mentors is so important I wanted to ask you an open question about success. How do you define success these days? And what are some of the misconceptions about success and happiness? Mm -hmm. Well, I I think for me as a a coach, my whole role is helping people to identify what success looks like for themselves. So it may be for some people, success is financial. It may be for some, it is a being able to reach a certain title and uh, uh, get to a certain level in an organization. For others, success is being really connected and having a strong relationship with family. Um, and, uh, you know, for others, it's being able to have work-life balance, to be able to enjoy life and travel. So I define success as being able to create the life that you love, that you want. And and your definition of success, what that life looks like, might and likely will look very, very different from what the next person's and what my definition and what successful a life for me looks like. True. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And also because we are so different, all of us, you know, that life, it's such a beautiful experience of diversity. Do you call this, what do you do, a purpose, a mission, a passion? This is my mission in life and thoughtfully fit, creating a world that is thoughtfully fit and can handle adversity and conflict and and crisis and uncertainty. Certainty, thoughtfully is my, it is my passion. It is what I'm on this world to do. It took me a couple decades to figure that out. And then once I figured it out, it took me a long time to give myself permission to go for it and to design my my firm around this mission. And now that I have, it is just absolutely clear that this is what I'm meant to do in the world. Yeah, I can hear in your voice. <laughs> it's very clear to me too. And another question is about, you just caught my attention now about when you said to give myself permission. So what gets in the way when it comes to living our dreams or the purpose of our lives? What are some of the biggest obstacles? Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of obstacles, and I think you named it really well, Valeria, that that everybody's different. And so some of them, we've got, many of us have this inner trash talk. And so that obstacle is, I'm not good enough. This is, I, I shouldn't be playing big. I need to go through more motions first before I, you know, I can't, this is success too fast, right? So there's some kind of what we call inner trash talk that's getting in the way. And Oftentimes I find that is the the biggest obstacle. And if you can get in a mindset 
um, and get your head right, you can overcome any external obstacles because the other, you know, there is, there's certainly are uh, funding. I mean, when I started my business, I was the sole breadwinner for a family of four and it was a huge obstacle to figure out how am I going to pay for health insurance and how am I going to be able to pay my mortgage when I don't have a salary coming in? Those were real obstacles. But once I got my mindset around the fact that I could be successful, then I could tackle those external obstacles much more easily. Mm, So it's changing our belief systems, isn't it? A shifting our perspective. It is. And and I'd say that's one of the things that's at the core of Thoughtfully Fit. So, you know, something happens and we we have a thought. We have thousands of thoughts throughout the day. Yeah. And those thoughts, they determine what our actions are, right? So if somebody sends you an email criticizing you and your first thought is, what a jerk, your action is going to be to pound out a reply saying, you know, getting defensive and criticizing back. Whereas if your first thought is, oh my God, he's right. I can't do anything right. Then you're going to have a different action. And so really being aware of what are our thoughts and then pausing in that moment, being aware of your thought and thinking, does this thought serve me or does this thought sabotage me? And when the thought is sabotaging you, don't act on it. Give yourself that, that, that time and that space to be able to ask some powerful questions. How do I want to show up? So I'm, I'm kind of triggered by this email right now. What are some other options? And maybe instead of hitting that reply uh, in that moment of haste, you pick up the phone and say, hey, I just got your email and it seemed like you were a little bit upset. I wanted to check in because I, I, uh, I, I wasn't sure what was what was happening with you. And you can take a different action. So I, I do think it all comes down to our those inner thoughts. And of course, then if our thoughts de- determine our actions and our actions, they determine what our results are, right? So how we behave will determine whether we're successful or not, because that's that's directly tied to the results that we get. That's the, the three steps that you have outlined, I remember in your book, to help you overcome any people problem, pause, think, and act. You just <laughs> talked about them. Yeah, that's so true. Pause yeah, that's and, the core um, of the model. So we've got the right. six practices and those are the, the, right, those are the hurdles that get in the way. And the, there's lots of strategies, but at the core, that's the number one strategy strategy. So just like if you want to be physically fit, you can work on, you can go to yoga, you can do cardio, you can do strength training. Your core is important for your fitness, for any of those activities. And it's, you're less likely to get injured at thoughtfully fit. The core is those three steps that you just said that you have to kick yourself off of autopilot. So the first step is to pause, take a breath, get present, and then think. And that's where you ask yourself some thoughtful questions to raise your awareness so that you then can act thoughtfully. Instead of doing it backwards, I had somebody say to me uh, recently, she said, oh my God, Darcy, I do it backwards. I I, I act. <laughs> yeah. And I think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And I have to pause and figure <laughs> out, clean up the mess. What to do next, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, I mean, it's funny, but not funny, right? The truth is. And yeah, that's reacting. That is so true. I love the message. I love your method. I love your work, Darcy. It's the work of awareness, isn't it? If not healing, I would say. Um, it is the work of awareness. Absolutely. And and so with our coaching firm, everything we do is focused around creating high performing people and teams. And the research shows that those who have peak performance have strong, great self-awareness. That's what's critical. So I, I love that you just bottom lined it. It does all come down to awareness. And another open question, it's about what do you feel is the purpose of the human experience? Well, do you have four hours? Ah, yes, right. Uh, we, we would need that. That's Oh, maybe not, right, Darcy? What comes to, to mind? Yeah. I mean, that, that, uh, what a beautiful question and, and a deep question, right? And so I think when, when we look at the, the purpose is to find out what it is that brings you the greatest fulfillment and then honoring that and putting that out into the world. Um, and that, while it might sound 
easy? It's not. I mean, I know it's not for me personally. And I know from working with my clients that identifying and figuring out what is your purpose? What is your passion? What is your love? What brings you joy and fulfillment? And then being able to make decisions and give yourself permission to align your life with that is not as simple as it sounds. It goes back to the idea of awareness. It takes being aware. It takes practice. It's work, isn't it? Although I would love to find a different word to use instead of work, but it is. It is. It is. You're right. And, and I think that's why when I, when I did my very first triathlon in 1998, I had not trained for it. And oh my gosh, Valeria, it oh, was I can imagine. miserable. <laughs> it was hard. It was really, really hard. And I decided after that, I, I love the energy. I love the people. I loved everything about it. So I thought, I really want to do this again. And so I hired a coach. I trained. I went to open water swim classes, right? I joined a, a master swim team. And the triathlons got easier. The more I trained and practiced, the easier they got. So yeah, you're right. It takes work. But if you, uh, just like if you were going to do 20 sit-ups once a month, of course it's going to be hard and you're going to be sore. But if you are consistent and you're training and practicing, it gets easier. So just like with Thoughtfully Fit, if you start to train and instead of reacting in the moment, you train yourself to pause and think before you act, it gets easier and then you get better results. I usually talk, I mean, I, I stopped for some reason even making comments about practice because I do a lot of spiritual work and a lot of reading, a lot of talk about that in, in conversations like this. And I noticed that practice and freedom, they kind of don't go together. <laughs> and then I wonder what freedom is. Is that possible to feel free in a sense of inner peace while working toward getting better at something? Is that possible? Mm, I think it's the, the, it's the main way to, that it is possible. If you want freedom, and if we put it through the lens of, of what, what uh, we focus on, which is helping people to be able to handle adversity, conflict, unpredictability, change, all of those things, whether it's a global pandemic, whether it's a cancer diagnosis, whether it is a neighbor that's annoying, to be able to respond intentionally and thoughtfully in the moment is the greatest source of freedom. It's the worst feeling in the world to overreact and have a mess that you have to clean up later and to have this horrible feeling or to silently stew and have it just be hanging on in your psyche that you can't, right? To me, this is what, ah. this is the path towards freedom. Yeah, that's wisdom. That's what I call it. Oh, beautiful. The freedom to respond. And then we're almost at the end. Oh my God. And I have so many other questions for you. Yeah. I wish I had more time. So you wrote the book, Thoughtfully Fit, Your Training Plan for Life and Business Success. If there's one message that you wish everyone to get from your book, what would that be? And with that in mind, what was the main intention of writing your book? Well, my book was written, Thoughtfully Fit officially came to life after, as I've shared with you earlier, five years of, of intense research. And five days later, after we, we, we were so excited and celebrating and we hired a, a, a strategic planning consultant and a PR firm to put it out into the world, five days later, my um, neighbor called me and said, Darcy, what's going on at your house? Oh my God, I don't know. I'm not home. Why? And she said, there's 50 police cars and a SWAT team and guns. And they just took your husband out in handcuffs. And I said, what are you talking about? Well, I found out later that my husband of 10 years, he was a, a full-time stay-at-home dad to our two young daughters. He was arrested for sexual assault of a minor he had met online. And he was taken away and uh, and never came home. It was the worst moment of my life. And all of a sudden I became ground zero. I had to hire my own attorney because the charges were so severe. And my attorney said, don't talk to anybody about anything, Darcy. And I mean, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison. This was severe. It was all over the nightly news and the social media. 
And I became ground zero to test drive Thoughtfully Fit because I had now more hurdles and, and obstacles and challenges than I ever could have imagined. And so Thoughtfully Fit is the story of how I used this model, these practices and the core to help me navigate this most incredible, awful nightmare that I found myself in the middle of. I'm sorry about that, Darcy. And yeah, I read about it. And that's when we kind of think about why does it happen? Is that something that we need to go through in order to grow? Mm -hmm. This just happens. I wonder a lot of times. I do too. And, yeah. and I'll tell you what's fascinating. You know, you hear about people who lose a limb or they go bankrupt and lose everything. And they say later after they've come through it and they've healed and processed and grieved and they say, I'm better for it. I 100% can say I'm better for this happening. And I never would have thought, I would have said, you're crazy. You're ridiculous. You're all lying, right? Why would you, you there's no way you're saying you're better off because you've lost a limb. And I'm saying 100% that I have more compassion. I have more empathy. I have more awareness. I have more freedom, my spirituality, all of the things we're touching on today, Valeria, are stronger because of this crisis. Yeah, I absolutely not just believe what you say, but I trust that, that there's something about life that it's constantly teaching us to elevate our thoughts, our actions. So that makes a lot of sense. It's life doing the work. It's very compassionate in a way. So in a way, suffering is the way that life shows compassion towards us, which is kind of really hard to believe or to understand and accept, but it really comes to me as a message. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're almost at the end, and I do have a few more questions for you. But before that, would you like to add anything else or read a passage in your book, Darcy? Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. I, um, I, I, I would add, if anybody's listening and saying, huh, I want to have more <laughs> awareness about my hurdles, you can go to thoughtfullyfit.com and there's a free quiz there. It's just a couple of minutes and it'll tell you which of these six hurdles is your biggest, right? Which is the one that you most struggle with that gets in the way of your success. And then it'll give you a strategy on how you can immediately start to train and practice to overcome that hurdle so that you can get back to living your life's mission and doing what you do best. Mm, yes, I'll have the link on your podcast profile. What is another word for life? I, that's a fabulous question. I, I, what comes to mind to, to, for me right now is just um, experience, like the, the full range of experience, the, the, the joys, the sadness, the, the, the suffering, all of that. Life is like this blanket, this quilt of all of these experiences and these moments. True. And speaking of experience, my last question to most of my guests is one that has to do with experiences. What three experiences you wish everyone to have before they lose the body, before they die? I would love everybody to have the experience of deep, unconditional love, of forgiveness. I think there's a lot of people who are, I, I, I understandably, uh, cannot understand how I could have forgiven my ex-husband for what he did. And I, I hope people would be able to experience freedom, right? Freedom mm -hmm. from... Uh, guilt, freedom from heaviness, for just pure inner love and freedom. I love your presence. It's very energized, mm -hmm. <laughs> I must say. And it's very enthusiastic, passionate. Thank you so much, Darcy, for being you. Oh, it is <laughs> an honor. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Once again, where can we find more information about you, your books, products, services, and future projects? Yeah, so DarcyLoma.com is my website. And then ThoughtfullyFit.com, you can take the quiz. And the book you can order on Amazon or Audible or any Barnes & Noble, any, look, any bookstore as well. Wonderful. Thank you again, Darcy. And we'll talk soon. Yeah, thanks, Valeria. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. 
To learn more about Darcy Loma and her work, please visit DarcyLoma.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.